Now let's take a look at some more useful functionality inside the graphical user interface. For general supervision, a good topology map will meet your requirements. But there will be times when you need more specific information, and typically you'll need it quickly. The properties section of Industrial High Vision provides you with information about specific properties of devices, connections, or ports in real time across the complete network. The information can even be sorted by device categories to avoid overloading you with data. Whether you need serial numbers for documentation or device temperatures for fault finding, the information is available to you with a couple of clicks. Duplex mismatches are a thing of the past, right? Nobody manually configures duplex anymore, do they? In IT networks, probably not. But in OT networks, things are not so clear. Some legacy end devices have hard-coded duplex and do not support auto-negotiation. Other networks were manually conf configured in the past, and this is only now causing problems as the bandwidth utilization increases. Finding duplex mismatches is a painstaking and tedious task prone to errors. The duplex check in Industrial High Vision highlights configuration failures across your network at a glance. There are many ways that Industrial High Vision can notify you or your colleagues about network problems. See the event handling video for more information. But all these techniques rely on one thing. Industrial High Vision must actually be running when the problem occurs. With the reliability of today's hardware, it's very likely that industrial high vision will not have stopped. But how can you be sure? Especially if the application is running on a remote PC? Just configure industrial high vision to send you an I'm alive email. You can configure the sending interval to avoid email overload. You can even receive the latest warning events in the email. You decide which information you want and when you want it. No more uncertainty for you. It's an easy mistake to make. You put Industrial High Vision into edit mode. This gives you write access. You then get to work designing your topology maps, fine tuning your status displays, or creating monthly reports. You then get called away to deal with a network problem, and you accidentally leave industrial high vision in edit mode. At best, you've prevented other administrators from editing the application. At worst, you may have given a passerby right access to industrial high vision and therefore to your network. Edit mode has a timer. Just set it for a suitable period of inactivity. Then you never need to worry about the problem again. A major difference between IT and OT networks is the connected equipment. An IT network typically supports equipment such as servers, PCs, and printers. This equipment is highly resilient to excessive network traffic. The same cannot be said for typical OT equipment such as PLCs, drives, or I.O. The protocol stacks supported by these devices can easily be overloaded by the level of broadcast traffic generated during an IP address range scan. This results in device failure. Unlike office-grade network management solutions, industrial high vision allows discovery traffic to be throttled back to a level which can be accommodated by sensitive industrial devices. So you can be certain that a device discovery scan will not have a negative effect on the applications running on your industrial network. 
Industrial High Vision uses a client-server architecture where the clients can be installed remotely. To enable communication, it's necessary to define TCP IP ports per service. By default, each version of Industrial High Vision uses different ports. This has a big advantage. If you are considering upgrading to a newer version, you can install the new version on the same hardware which is running the current version. If you're satisfied with the new version, just go live. This also has a big disadvantage. If you have firewalls or switches with access control lists between the clients and the server, you will need to update the rules to reflect the new ports. Fortunately, the port numbers are configurable, so you can select whichever option best suits your migration strategy.